Remember the big dust up between Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire back in January when he secretly recorded his supposed friend Jeremy Boring at the Daily Wire in order to supposedly expose how they were locking young and up and coming YouTubers into exploitative contracts? But as I said at the start, it turned out to be just a scheme, a grift, because Crowder didn't have any of the income coming in anymore from Mug Club because all of that membership money and the contact information went directly to the Blaze. And then when that contract was expired and the Daily Wire rebuffed or rejected his counteroffer for more money, he had no income coming in from them, obviously, no income from the Blaze. So then he launched his scheme and stabbed his friends in the back. And as somebody who's been a professional YouTuber full-time for over 12 years, I've told you exactly how the ad revenue works and how the contracts work and the MCNs and all that. Well, it turns out that... Uh, the exploitative contracts were the ones that he was uh, forcing or uh, enticing his employees to sign because his former sidekick, Dave Landau, who left the show, this isn't a disgruntled employee who got fired, he left the show and he just did a very interesting and lengthy podcast with Michael Malice on his podcast, You're Welcome, explaining what a psycho Crowder is. But then there's more, so stay tuned, because we now have perhaps the biggest missing piece of the puzzle as to why Steven was so unhinged and so desperate for money, because not only was he left without income from the Blazes Mug Club memberships, but also he is getting a divorce, and so his wife is going to be taking half of his money and he's going to be on the hook for 18 years of child support for his two young twin kids. And ordinarily, I would never talk about that. It's none of our business. But Stephen Crowder has made it our business. And he has made it part of his grift. I just think he was bullied at some point in his life. And he's be he has become the bully. And he doesn't realize it. And that's what sucks is he's he's got a lot of yes men around him and i really do love his staff and i love working with them but i think that they are kind of just a little bit intimidated at this point to keep their own job i know i was so i don't blame him but it's just he, he there's just something there that i just don't grasp because i there is part of him that i know is good i've met that person but then he does stuff that's behind your back that's like this and you're like why are you why are you doing this for power and it's it's very it, and it's just not worth it to me. I'm sure it's, the phone call was recorded, so we can always hear it. And I'm not saying that to be a jerk. I'm just saying that he legitimately records his phone calls. Okay. There's so many other just weird things that he revealed from behind the scenes about what a control freak Crowder is, and all the ways that he tried to keep Dave down and screw him out of making more money. It became a little weird because a light was put in where it was his rant button, and. It was basically a Dave don't talk button. Wait, so there's literally a light bulb. What color was the light bulb? There was four lights in a row. <laughs> there were three it... lights. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. And it, when it was hit, I wasn't supposed to talk. And they you said, remember, you know, was it like a regular colored light bulb? Or was it like red? Uh, it was like a a, a yellow, uh, okay. a pretty bright yellow, like a, okay. a you know, like yield. So it's like off camera, but in your eye, eyesight. Yes. And I, I was, would he be the one pressing the button or was there a producer pressing the button? He would press it. So like under like Mr. Burns, like he had a button under his desk or, or, or the table. And when it's Steven's turn to talk and Dave needs to shut the F up, he presses this button. Yes. And I commented on the video saying basically, you know, someone who's been a full-time YouTuber for 12 years, I try to tell everybody that Crowder's whole beef with the Daily Wire was a giant grift, but worse than that, because he not only took advantage of his audience's ignorance about how the business works, but he stabbed his friends in the back in order to galvanize his own audience into joining Mug Club to support him, and all the details that you're probably familiar with if you saw my in-depth reports on the whole situation when it happened. So Michael Malice, the host, took a screenshot of that comment and then posted it on Twitter just to let people know over there what my take on the whole situation was in case they missed it. And guess who liked the tweet? Dave Landau, of course, confirming that he agrees with everything I said. Then earlier this week, his grifting sunk to a whole new level. He accused Candace Owens of blackmailing him into staying silent and to not expose any more of the Daily Wire's terrible business practices. Otherwise, she would expose his shameful secret. No, not that he likes dressing in women's clothes. Everybody knows that. I have been living with a proverbial boot 
on my neck for going on years now. Uh, since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Now, let me say on the outset, to be clear, there is no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. Okay, so he's getting a divorce. That's unfortunate. That's a personal matter. Probably should have just left it at that. Maybe ask people to pray for him and then continued to try to just put on an entertaining show. But instead, he drug Candace Owens into the mix, saying that she was extorting him, uh, apparently into staying silent about the Daily Wire and made all sorts of other strange comments about how uh, it's a strange wife's fault, and he picked the wrong woman, and started airing all this bizarre, dirty laundry. It's not the kid's fault, he said. Well, of course it's not the kid's fault. Then he played this clip of Candace Owens from three months ago, when she was responding to him, stabbing his supposed friends in the back, and then distorting what the Daily Wire's business model was, and holding himself up as a holier-than-thou savior of little YouTubers who is now going to expose the Daily Wire. And I saw this clip at the time, I'll play it in just a second, and I thought that she was, you know, pointing out that he was having a mental breakdown, and she may have been alluding to his personal problems, which, of course, actually are relevant to him being a desperate money-grubbing scumbag because he's losing half of his money and he's going to lose millions of dollars in child support over the next 18 years. And this is something that I've kept private for likely far too long. Um, many other people knew about this behind the scenes. Some, not all, but some of them in positions of power, influence, leverage, knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. Steven has a lot going on, I guess is the best way to say. He has a lot going on and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their lives. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation not to condemn him but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian. I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. Candace then responded saying this. He's now upping the ante and suggesting that I extorted him. I will not take that lightly, okay? I am not Hillary Crowder. I am not anybody in his family. I am not going to take somebody going onto his platform and alleging that I either harassed threatened or did anything that would put his children at risk. That is very serious stuff that he is saying. And so what I did this morning after this clip was sent to me is I contacted a defamation lawyer and I am sending Stephen Crowder a cease and desist. And I'm going to demand a full-throated retraction to the idea that Candace Owens threatened him or extorted him. And not that I simply did a little math. One plus one equals two. A crazy man doing these sorts of things to his friends obviously means that something is going on personally. But the plot thickens because it turns out that the reason he addressed his divorce wasn't because he got sick of Candace Owens holding it over his head in order to extort him or blackmail him into staying silent and not criticizing the Daily Wire. It's because one of his former employees, comedian Owen Benjamin, spilled the beans Tweeting this, then, the day before Crowder addressed it, saying, I bet Crowder tells his audience tomorrow about the divorce because I spilled the beans. The Stephen Crowder Daily Wire beef was pretty much a thing of the past. Most people forgot about it, although many will never trust Crowder again, and his image is forever tarnished because, like I said, it was all just a giant grift. But now it makes a little bit more sense because desperate people do desperate things. So not only was he desperate because he didn't have any money coming in from Mug Club, because again, all of those paid memberships went to the Blaze and he didn't have any of the contact information or the payment information, anything to connect with those people again. So he had to galvanize his audience to rejoin his new Mug Club, but also he's losing half of his money and millions of dollars in child support. But wait, there's more. His estranged wife 
her family and her attorney definitely aren't happy about what they say are false statements, <clears throat> lies, that Crowder is making about why the marriage is ending. So they released this three and a half minute long video of a security camera showing Crowder being a complete psycho, treating his then eight month pregnant wife like a slave. And I'll show some of it here in just a second. And I, but I have to tell you a little bit in order for it to make full sense. She didn't want to handle the dog's medication because apparently there's a warning about it being toxic, dangerous to pregnant women to touch can probably affect the fetus. And so instead of him just giving the dog their medication, he's berating her about it and tells her that she should just handle it with gloves. It just, it's so bad. But first, several other former employees then released statements in support of Hillary Crowder, his estranged wife, including Jared Monroe, who went by Not Gay Jared on the show, who is Locked into an NDA, you can't really talk trash about Steven. But he did say to Hillary Crowder, who was like a sister to me, I love you and I am here for you. Then the guy who was known as Sven the Computer, who was no longer on the show, issued this statement saying, I saw Hillary Crowder in 2018. She was always a superbly pleasant person to be around and made you feel like you were part of her family. Can't say enough good things about her. This is the statement released from the family saying, quote, Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas, apart from her family and support system in Michigan, and is focused on taking care of her young children. She is not prepared at this time to speak about her divorce becoming public or the misleading statements made by Stephen about their relationship. The truth is that Hillary spent years hiding Stephen's mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from her friends and family while she attempted to save their marriage. She was the one who was asking to work on their relationship to keep the marriage intact for their unborn children. It goes on to say that he wasn't present for the birth of his children, which is just awful. And, you know, usually you should never trust the statements of an estranged wife about what it was that was going on in the relationship. But I'll show the security camera footage in just a moment. It's absolutely terrible. We hope that Stephen will cease speaking publicly about these personal matters in an untruthful manner. We also look forward to there being full transparency in the legal process. So there is fairness and accountability for the actions that caused the divorce and to ensure the outcome is what is best for the interests of the young children. And just to show you that I used to have Steven's back, even though I was never a fan of the show, I always respected his success and respected what he was doing for the movement. So two years ago, he got a strike on his main channel and then he went and posted a video about it on his second channel, the Crowder Bits channel, where they post all of the skits. And I immediately tried to reach out to him to tell him to delete the video because YouTube was going to consider that to be circumventing the ban and give him another strike, which could have totally banned his channel if he already had a previous strike before the new one. And then that would have been the third strike. He would have been totally gone. Then I didn't have a way to get in touch with him. So I reached out to his lawyer, Bill Richmond, who followed me on Twitter. And I sent him a DM and I told him immediately, I said, dude, you need to take the video down. That's going to be a violation of the terms of service. I reached out to another big YouTuber who I knew would be able to get in contact with him. And I told him to tell him immediately to take that video down before YouTube notices and gives him another strike. But it was too late. Uh, and then I got an email or a DM back from Bill Richmond, you know, a couple hours later saying, oh, yep. Well, they took the video down, got another strike. And then uh, they suspended the channel for like another two weeks, I think. But what would I know? I'm just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop. I'm not a big conservative ink star like Steven Crowder. Some of his fans, after seeing the footage that I'm going to show you in just a moment, aren't just unsubscribing to his channel and mug club, but they're smashing their louder with Crowder mugs because you'll see he is a total dirtbag. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary of abuse and cruel. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I do have steaks, wood pellets, my grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, how does the man respect? How does the man receive love from that? No, no. How does the man respect the man? No, you're not taking love. Steven, you're not taking the car. Steven, you are not taking the car. Then I will ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? 
Oh, yes, right? Give it an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. Do, feeling some constraints? Stephen. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. It doesn't work either. <laughs> I, I, Do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you go to the back on back? The only way out of this is discipline which die. It's the only way out of it when we're at an impact. We are going to get past. Good. Because you can't have any discipline which die. Yeah. There you go. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you give up so easily. I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said, then we're at an impact. Steven, no, we are at an impact. Okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, your beast is sick. Your beast Watch it. is sick. Watch it. Watch it. I'm going to let go. I'll get what you need me to get. And I, I need some space. We need to just stop and baby for a little bit. Okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it. You go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right, right in the past. Become someone, let's do it, day in and day out, worthy of a life worth. No, not as a wife. I didn't say as a wife. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get texts what you need. I'll get you what you need. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm not, engage, I'm not trying to Are you committed enough to do those things? Back. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you and committed to it. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs take? Don't you take that in. Now, the family claims that as the Crowders head inside, Stephen gets angrier and angrier, and by his own admission, so I'm assuming that's in the divorce proceedings, screams that he will F his wife up. Now, every couple's going to have fights. Some fights can get pretty nasty. Sometimes people say things in the heat of the moment that are extremely vicious that they may or may not mean, and usually it's nobody's business, but Crowder made it everybody's business, and this is kind of a case of reaping what you sow because he deceptively recorded and selectively edited his conversation with Jeremy Boring in order to use that to grift and try to make a bunch of money, and now, well, there's a secret recording of him that's floating around the internet revealing his true character. Of course, I don't stab friends of mine in the back and try to frame it in a false light to grift off of it. I just write books and sell awesome t-shirts like my new Wanted for President in 2024 shirt, which you should order from markdice.com or click the link in the description below. It's got a cool distressed look to it because I wanted it to look like one of those old-fashioned Western Wanted posters. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.